Before we get into building this report, let's run the report and see the behavior of the prompt and the dynamic columns. The prompt presents three options, order method by quantity, product line by revenue, and product by sales targets. We'll select order method by quantity, and then run the report by clicking finish. And you'll see four columns presented, year followed by order method, product line, and quantity. And the quantity values are formatted as simple numbers. Now let's rerun the report, this time selecting product line by revenue. And this time notice the last three columns are each different from the previous run. Product line followed by product type and then revenue. And the revenue values are formatted as currency. And this is different from the previous run where the values were formatted simply as numbers. Now if we rerun the report one last time and select product by sales targets, we'll see that the last three columns again are different, this time product followed by product description and sales target. And this is all made possible by having a prompt control that uses static choices. And we'll investigate these static choices in more detail as we build the report. If we go to the Page Explorer and click on page one, it's a simple list report with a static year column and then followed by three dynamic columns. In this case, topic column, details, and measure. And conditional formatting is applied to the measures values depending on which choice is made in the prompt. Okay, so let's build this report from scratch. We'll click the new report icon and we'll select list from the object types, click OK, and then expand time and drag year onto the report. Then under the insertable objects pane, we'll select the toolbox tab and drag a query calculation to the report. We'll call this topic column. Then in the expression definition, we're going to create a macro, in this case, a prompt macro. The opening syntax is a pound sign. Then we'll type prompt, an opening bracket. And then the first argument that's going to be passed to this prompt function will be the prompt name. So it's a single quote followed by the prompt name, in this case, report type. And then the next argument will be the data type. And that could be a string or an integer. But in this case, we're going to pass something called token. And token allows us to pass in data item references. In this case, the column names. And the last argument is an optional argument that we're going to pass in here. And that will be in single quotes as well. And this will be the default value for the prompt itself. In this case, we're going to add order method as the default value. Then we'll close the brackets. And then to close off the macro itself, we'll add a pound at the end. Now this macro is key to this technique as it derives the rest of the dynamic columns in the report. We'll click OK. And then we're gonna add another query calculation to the report. This calculation will provide more details about the topic column. So we'll call this one details. The expression for this calculation will contain a case statement that will be based on the parameter we created in the prompt macro. So we'll start off by typing case, followed by when, and then we're going to select the parameter from the parameters tab. And this is the report type parameter that was created in the prompt macro. And when this report type parameter is equal to order method, which we can simply select from our metadata tree, and drag order method into the expression and encase it in single quotes. Then we're going to want to display product line in this particular column. And product line provides more details about the order methods. The next statement will be when report type is equal to, and in this case, we'll select product line then the column that we're going to want to display will be 
product type. And we simply grab product type from the metadata tree, drag it in the expression, close off the parentheses. Then we'll type else. And the final condition will be when product is selected, we want to present product description. And again, enclosed in brackets. And finally, we'll type end to close off this case statement. Click OK. And then we'll create another query calculation. And this one will be very similar to the details column. This one will be for measures. And rather than typing out the case statement, I'll simply copy and paste a prepared case statement from my notepad. And here you can see that when the report parameter, report type is equal to order method, then display quantity. When it's equal to product line, display revenue. And for all other cases, in this case, when product is selected, display sales target. So we'll click OK. And we'll add some formatting to the report. We'll do some grouping on year and topic column and add a total for the measures column. The next thing we need to do is create a prompt page. So from the page explorer, click prompt pages. And then from the insertable objects pane, drag a page object to the prompt pages pane. Double click prompt page one. And then under insertable objects, scroll down until you find value prompt and then drag that object to the prompt page. Instead of creating a new parameter, we'll use an existing parameter. And in this case, again, selecting report type, which was created in the prompt macro, and then select finish. We'll select the prompt, and in the properties pane, we'll change the select UI to a radio button group. And here you can see under the properties, the parameter is indeed report type. We'll scroll up in the properties pane and select the ellipsis beside static choices. Here we'll add the first of three static values that will be available to report consumers. Click add, and then we'll enter a use and display value. The display value is a user-friendly string that the report consumers will see. In this case, we'll type in order method by quantity. In the use text box, we'll place a data item reference that will be used to dynamically generate our column at runtime. In this case, I've placed all the reference items in Notepad for easy copying and pasting. I'll paste the order method data item reference here and click OK. Now we'll add a second static choice. In this case, it will be product line by revenue. I'll paste in the product line data item reference and click OK. And then finally, we'll put in product by sales target. As a note, to obtain these data item references, you can go to the metadata tree, right click on the item that you wish to grab the reference for, select properties, and then simply copy the ref item for that. So now we have our three static choices. Let's quickly run the report and see how it behaves at this point. The first thing we'll notice is that no default value is selected. That's something we'll fix in a moment. For now, we'll select order method by quantity, click finish and see that indeed our columns appear as expected. If we rerun the report and select product line by revenue, we now return product line followed by product type as well as revenue, but revenue is not formatted the way we'd like it. We'd prefer this to be a currency format. So let's go and fix those items now. With the prompt object selected, scroll down in the properties pane till you see default selections. Select it and then click the ellipsis. Click the add button. And in that text box, we're gonna place our order method data item reference. We'll click okay, click okay again. And then from the page explorer, we're gonna to navigate to page one. And we're going to multi-select measure total measures, and the overall summary total measure. We'll right-click, point to style, 
and then select Conditional Styles. From the New Conditional Styles dropdown, we'll select Advanced Conditional Style. We'll click New Advanced Condition, and we'll select the Parameters tab, drag in Report Type, and then equate that to the parameter display value. In this case, order method by quantity. When this condition is true, we're going to leave the formatting as is. But for all remaining values, in this case revenue and sales targets, we're going to edit the formatting to currency. So we'll edit the data format and select currency from the drop down list and then click OK to all the open conditional formatting dialogs. Now when we run the report again, we do see that we have a default selection, in this case order method by quantity. We'll click Finish and see that quantity comes back formatted as a number, which is what we want. When we rerun the report and select product line by revenue, we'll see that the measures column is now formatted as currency. And finally, if we rerun the report one more time, product by sales target, again we see the dynamic columns are returned as expected and sales targets as currency. So using a prompt macro, case statements, and a prompt control with static choices, you can easily manipulate the columns that are returned by the report. We hope you found this technique useful and hope to see you watching more IBM Cognos Proven Practice videos.